This is Baron's New Vegas Gun Guides, and this episode is on a niche rifle that, in my opinion, easily gets confused with others like it. That is, of course, the Assault Carbine. The first 5mm weapon we have covered, and the second of only two automatic rifles in the base game, although the DLCs would seek to remedy this with hard-hitting automatics. Hot off the heels of the light machine gun, the Assault Carbine is a lighter but weaker alternative. It lives up to its name as an assault weapon, dishing out firepower at an equally fast rate, made for rapid and overwhelming hails of fire, when the whine of a minigun gives the enemy just too much time to get into cover. And not to mention the looks, the assault carbine shares similar silhouettes to the marksman carbine and the service rifle. In fact, it is modeled after a barely different Colt 733, with a few changes. It maintains almost the exact same architecture, but lacks the charging handle so often featured on AR-15 derivative rifles, instead opting for a little knob that allows the courier to pull the bolt back, which is a feature not on the original Colt 733. It also has a slightly longer barrel, which goes to explain the respectable spread. Also, despite being chambered in the fictional 5mm round, it has the same visual magazine as any of the other 5.56mm infantry rifles. It also features a pretty classic foregrip, which like the whole rifle seems to be in impeccable shape. Now as to why this weapon is chambered in 5mm instead of say 5.56, the most likely reason is that this weapon is actually the new incarnation to one of the staples of Fallout 1 and 2, the AK-112 Assault Rifle. The AK-112 Assault Rifle featured a 24 round magazine and could fire on single shot or burst, sending a glut of lead down range but was actually an aging design by the time the Great War started. Based on Fallout 3, it was replaced by the R91 assault rifle, or energy weapons in general, with the whole class of infantry weapons shifting with the introduction of power armor before the Great War. While the AK-112 is old and outdated, the assault carbine on the other hand seems young and in service. Much like the marksman carbine, it was a weapon actively used by paratroopers and so Nellis provides the source for most of them, although gun runners and the gunsmiths are the other source of it. As yet another carbine in the courier's armory, this weapon makes itself known in caves and in buildings, sending 5mm bullets through the halls like a storm of angry bees, minimizing the footprint it has on the screen while still packing somewhat of a punch. Now, the assault carbine stands much lower in terms of power than all but one other rifle, the venerable BB gun. At only 13 damage, it isn't a stunner in that department, but it will make up for it in the ammo section later on. It is also firing full auto, emptying its magazine of 24 in only 2 seconds, with a rate of fire of 12 per second. This is a DPS of 156, a third lower than the LMG, but still respectable. With a 2 second firing time and a 2 second reload time, its DPS is spread right in half in a projected firefight, at only 78 DPS. Again, not the bullet hose of its bigger counterpart. What it is good at is spread. At only 1.2 spread, it is one of the most accurate automatics and is able to hold a bead at medium range. This helps a lot in VATS, where its low cost at 20 AP and 5 shot burst gives a deficiency of 3.3 damage per AP, and that's a lot of stopping power in the slowed time of VATS. Like all automatics, it has a low crit rate at only 0.06 multiplier, with double damage being the end result. Such a performance isn't surprising, and any notion of stealthy is out the window in the courier's hand. To round it out, the iron sight is a ring and double post sight built into the carrying handle. The carrying handle obscures a lot of your sight from the sides and the ring and double posts obscure a lot of the target. But it is enough of a visual sight that it gets you roughly on target, although it's not super suited for headshots in a tense situation. Now, price-wise, it is one of the cheaper of the rifle offerings. At 3,950 caps for the base one, it's only slightly more expensive than the LMG Expanded Mag mod and it is only featuring one weapon mod itself in the base game. But it is not crucial, as it's just an expanded magazine mod that turns its 24 round magazine into a 30 round one. Whoopee. For a price of 1,300 caps, it is 
far from necessary. GRA does add a variant with 3 mods, but we will cover that in a few videos from now. You also get a lot of bang for your buck, fitting for an automatic. 3,745 shots of standard, 1,245 shots of surplus, which is right on par with the LMG. You can unload mag after mag without too much worry. As for the ammo, it's our first foray into 5mm, and it's certainly a hidden surprise. At one cap per round, the standard round is cheap and available in large quantities. It also has an innate DT modifier. At a value of minus 10, the standard round lets the assault carbine punch through medium armor, which is surprising looking at its just its base stats. At a steeper price of 3 caps per round, AP ammo lets you cut through power armor, as it has a minus 25 damage threshold modifier, while reducing damage to 95%, which is pretty much nothing when you consider its base damage. And nothing is safe when using this ammo, as there's not much that has a higher DT than 25. Also at 3 caps per round is the hollow points, which give you 75% more damage, but they actually only increase enemy DT by 2 times, making lightly armored enemies still viable targets. And finally, at a price of 100 caps for 250 rounds, is the surplus ammo. Still featuring an innate minus 10 DT modifier, it increases damage by 15%, increases spread by 20%, and increases the wear on the gun by 3 times. Since the gun can take so much abuse, it's not the worst thing to be using this ammo, especially since Sergeant Contres and Camp McCarran can have over 600 boxes of surplus in stock late in the game. GRA also adds another ammo type, but that too will be covered in that later video. This weapon is definitely not bad for the price and has quite a few places to pick it up, and needing only a gun skill of 75 and a strength of 3, it is the bridge between the service rifle and the more specialized marksman carbine or the LMG. At only 6 pounds, it's also a good pocket automatic, more on target than the SMGs with cheaper ammo to boot. There is no unique version, just the GRA version, but a companion does have a version that's unavailable to the player and is unique in its own right. The Grandma Nightkin that is everyone's friend Lily carries a special assault carbine as her ranged weapon choice. In line with the Nightkin's predilection for stealth, it is fitted with a suppressor, making it comparable to the silenced 22 SMG but with a hefty armor piercing boost. If the player could use it, it would act like Fallout 3's perforator or infiltrator, but alas it is Lily's and Lily's alone. Now this weapon is surprisingly common, but you might not even notice it due to its shared looks. The Gunrunner's Workshop has one in its back room, Vault 34 has two in the armory and damage conditions like most of the stuff in there. The Nellis Array on the body of an ant hunting boomer you can easily find one. The NCR Ranger Safe House has one in nearly broken condition as all weapons in safe houses are. Gamora's Basement in a Footlocker contains one as well as Nero in the same casino. In the Ruby Hill Mine there's a respawning super mutant brute corpse that has one. Super mutants in general can have them, especially the brutes on Black Mountain. There's also a Nightkin in Black Rock Caves that uses one, and finally Norton, a mercenary that scopes out Jacobstown has one. And then we get to the factions, legionary assassins and NCR veteran troopers might carry one, with normal NCR troopers getting them at the Battle of Hoover Dam. Now as far as buying them, Daniel Contres, who sells the surplus boxes, might have some. The arms merchant at 188 Trading Post can sell them. And finally, as always, the Vindatron can carry them. For me, the Assault Carbine is a bit of a sleeper hit. Hidden by its low damage and similar visuals to other weapons, it's an easy to gloss over weapon. But with its exceptional fire rate and the innate armor penetration of its ammo, this makes this weapon able to kill all sorts of enemies, given enough magazines obviously. It is also much easier to find and its ammo is usually given in huge quantities fit for the minigun, so you can go far without ever buying 5mm ammo from the vendor. In terms of comparison to the service rifle, if you can get this over that, there's almost no reason to use it until you get the marksman, carbine, or the LMG, provided you can use either of those options.